Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, our host, Kurt Sasso. We're joined today by a fellow, well, I'm going to say podcaster because that's what I used to do, and I will be getting back to that eventually on the show. But we are joined today by a very talented individual, a lover of all games, a talented podcast host and interview and article reader as well. We're joined today by Chris Osborne, of course, from Play Comics. How are you doing today, Chris? Let's start at the very beginning here. How did Play Comics start and what is it all about? Play Comics is a show where I look at, or rather, I grab a guest and we look at video games based on comic properties and how well they represent that source material. Hmm. So I'm not really caring so much about whether a game is good or not although that's certainly not something you can get away from entirely while you do this. But rather, I'm looking at Batman, you know, Arkham Asylum shows off what Batman is like well, or the X-Men game on regular Nintendo is a giant fucking piece of shit, (laughs) because it is, and it doesn't teach you anything. First episode, your first guest on the show, you know, what was that like for you? The fact that you got either someone famous or that you got a friend and you started this process, was was there nerves involved with that? Oh, the first episode I tried to do by myself. Uh, the first few I tried to do by myself, actually. And it was pretty horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, part of it was I had fallen into the trap of thinking I had to record it all in one take. So if I screwed up, I would start over. But also, I decided from the beginning that I was going to go roughly chronologically through when the games were released, Mm -hmm. just as a way to kind of give myself some kind of roadmap, because I didn't want to go in and cover all the really good games first, and then get to, you know, however many episodes in, and all I have are these middle-of-the-road games that nobody wants to talk about. (laughs) So the first episode, I cheated a little bit and just did all the Atari games in one shot nice. because I knew I wouldn't be able to talk about them for long and you know, I mean, it's Atari. There's only so much you can do. Mm-hmm. So I did a few episodes by myself and then uh, the first guest I had on was somebody I thought I was going to have on for as a more permanent co-host thing. So it was a guy that I had met playing kickball over here and had him on and it it was definitely better having somebody else to bounce off of for everything and he got some good ideas going Um, he wanted to do a new segment which was definitely a good idea but we weren't putting things out consistently enough to really have news because we would record something that was new and then I'd get it edited like three or four weeks later Mm. and nobody cared anymore Um, he I started off with a blue yeti which I mean a microphone is a microphone. If it works for you, it works for you. Whatever. But um, he told a local game store that we would come do something for their birthday party. And a Blue Yeti is not a good microphone for that. <laughs> so I went out and got the ATR 2100 that I have now because of that. Mm-hmm. And when he... We just got to the point where he kept not being able to come over to record episodes and I still wanted to do them but I knew that I needed somebody else to do them with me and I decided you know I just I don't want to deal with having a regular co-host and I had kind of run into it a little bit with Sean too like we're going to talk about a game or a comic franchise again so like I can't sit there there's only so much comic history you can get into when you have, you know, 37,000 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games. <laughs> so instead, I decided I'm going to just get a different guest for every episode. Nice. So I talked to a couple of friends that I had met online through podcasting stuff mostly because I knew that I wouldn't have to worry about the tech stuff with them, if nothing else, and got a couple episodes recorded. And from there... I mean, for some reason, people just really jumped onto the show. And I think that is partly because you have a lot of podcasts looking at video games through the news or the history side of things. And you have a lot of comics podcasts, but I haven't really seen too many shows that combine them the way I do. There are definitely shows that will talk about video games and comics, 
but they talk about that boar as distinct things. Mm -hmm. and they definitely don't mix them together the way that I do. I find it's great that you've, you've merged, you know, both geek mediums as you have, and, and you're consistent with the quality as well, too. That's the one thing I noticed when I first started listening. It was, you know, you just have a great delivery, you have a great show overall, and, and I'm glad that you're, you're able to promote it, and hopefully, you know, the show helps you promote it to a different audience. Well, it's something I'm definitely looking forward to. You know, I, I want to get more guests on. At some point, you know, you run out of friends. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I can have my friends on for a second or third or fourth or in some cases, seventh episode. But, you know, I like hearing new voices with stuff. Some of my favorite episodes that I've done have been people that were just recommended to me that I never would have even thought about asking probably wouldn't have even known existed one of the very early episodes that i did with a guest was um a guy named joshua bowman from faith deficit it was in one of the facebook podcasting groups it was a thread of well what's a problem with something you're gonna have with your podcast today i just kind of put in there like yeah you know i'm recording this episode on silver surfer for regular nintendo and you know it's, it's a crappy game so yeah kind of wish I knew somebody who knew Silver Surfer stuff because I don't. And this guy pops up he's like, uh, I know Silver Surfer stuff. You, I could go record with you. <laughs> so, like, sweet. Jumped in on, like, just a random thing like that has an episode to where I don't like to talk about my listener stats for stuff because I just I can't find a good way to pull it up, but this is like the one that I will talk about without throwing actual numbers in there when it came out i was not getting a ton of listens it was i think the 13th episode if i remember right of the entire podcast and so i had just started being consistent with everything and getting the release schedule out mm -hmm. but he came on and you know it's the normal like low number of listens but consistent with everything else that i had going and definitely was not an episode that randomly um got a lot of listens later like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Batman episodes and stuff you know when I would do another look at those characters then the previous episodes I had done would always go back and get more listens there but the Silver Surfer one just it never had anything like that to help push it hmm. but I went back and I was a giant geek hence why I'm here and <laughs> did made a spreadsheet of all my uh, download stats and stuff, nice. which I need to get going on again because I discovered cool things like this, that silver server episode. Um, it never has had a big old clump of downloads, but it has consistently gotten downloads. So like it's sitting there, you know, bottom 10 episodes for a while as I had started doing my stats stuff. And then all of a sudden, that's a top 10 episode that's for my all-time downloads. How many downloads do you have? I think the last time Pinecast gave me its congratulations you did this was 25,000. That's awesome. That, I mean, hey, any, any type of consistency that you have, especially when it comes to downloads, is, is incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty consistent number of downloads for every episode. You know, I haven't... I actually haven't put out a regular episode for, I want to call it like a month, month and a half, but I've had these creator talk bonus episodes that I've been putting out every week. So, you know, I still have things that I'm putting out and people seem to like the creator talk episodes as much as the regular episodes. Are you going to change your format to that specifically, or you just want to keep a more wider net for your, your geekiness? I think I'm definitely going to keep doing both of them um, depending on what happens with available time is the main constraint like I might end up spinning the creator talk stuff off into its own show but I like doing both of them so they're both going to keep happening you have these games you, you have guests on the show are they entertainment people or are they friends or are they just people that you find how do you gather your guests it definitely started off as friends because that's pretty much where every podcast starts. You get your friends to come on it. You got to, you know, make people think you know what you're doing. But it's branched out a lot into like 
I've grabbed Chris Sims for a couple episodes. He's written stuff for Marvel and a bunch of other people. Um, I've grabbed a bunch of creators just talking about their stuff too, because I had a few friends who were working on like Kickstarter projects and stuff and fitting them into the regular rotation of episodes just wasn't going to work. So I said, Hey, why don't I just do bonus episodes talking to creative people about their stuff? I recently put out an episode talking to uh, Becky Cloonan and Michael Conrad about Wonder Woman stuff. I mean, it, it's gotten into that level of things to where it's just, hey, random, mostly comic creator person, do you want to come talk about your stuff nice. and not have to really do any work for it? So that's the best way to get it. You, you get someone that's passionate about talking about what they're into and what they're currently doing, and the rest just kind of falls into place there. It's worked out really well. Like I've only had a couple people who couldn't do it. And honestly, most of those were just time issues where I asked them too close to when something was coming out and their schedule was already packed or something came up and they couldn't have done it with anybody. One of the things that a lot of people have asked me is, you know, what am I doing to get these people on? How much am I paying them to do it? <laughs> that kind of question. It's like, I'm not paying them anything. I mean, they want to come on. They want to promote their stuff. They want to get their stuff in front of more people's eyes so they can buy it. And I mean, an episode I'm going to put out pretty soon, I was talking to Dave Baker mm -hmm. and, you know, we're kind of joking around and yeah, you know, there's going to be like at least four people who listen to this episode that are maybe going to go buy your book. But that's f even if that's an accurate number, that's four people who didn't know about it, who weren't going to buy it before. That's the best case. I mean, I, I had uh, Frank Forte on who worked at, at Heavy Metal Magazine, and he was talking about his Kickstarter. And it's just like, yeah, you know, people know me from this and this, but I want to promote this. I want to promote my own, you know, creative IP. And it's, it's great to see that. Um, what's the most difficult aspect about interviewing these guests? Is it, uh, do you geek out over them? Or is this a, you finally into a flow where, you know, it's just another person talking about a creative uh, product. Thankfully, I get all my geeking out done uh, <laughs> when I tell people that I haven't booked. So, you know, there, there's usually a, a week or two where I've got time to get all that out of my system. So by the time I talk to them, I'm, you know, they're a fairly normal person and it's fine. Honestly, the biggest issue is the tech stuff and getting that down. Like people coming on wanting to use their Sorry. laptop oh. microphones and speakers and not thinking about headphones, that kind of thing. And I mean, I'm talking to people who don't do this all the time, especially with the creative people doing their stuff. So it's just a real quick, hey, we need to get this fixed in five minutes or it's going to sound like shit. <laughs> yeah, that, and I'm noticing a lot of that with the video. If they don't have a, a, a well-lit area or if their audio is just a bit off, like I did an interview with the guy over Zoom from their cell phone and the mobile connection wasn't that great. So they went from a full screen like what I'm seeing here with you to this tiny like 250 by 250 pixel of a square <laughs> with them talking i mean peek behind the curtain over here i've got two monitors set up just with a big old empty word document so i can use them as lights a couple other lights and the whole reason i have the green screen thing going is so you can't see the mess behind me <laughs> as a as a host though asking questions obviously to keep the flow going when it comes to your guests is obviously very important are there a couple of questions you always fall back on that kind of gets them into their frame of mind of having a good conversation with you? Uh, when I start things off, I usually ask them like what their third favorite color is mm -hmm. or something dumb like that. Just kind of set, set the tone to where we're not going to be completely serious the whole time. And that's perfectly fine. Um, at some point, I usually ask them what their favorite Muppet is because I've nice. just found that everybody likes Muppets. And I, I don't know, they're just wonderful. So there's no way you can really get around that. But for the most part, I don't go in with a lot of questions pre-planned because every person is different. Every interview is different. My reaction to their work has been different or to the topic that we're talking about. So like anything that I'm going to ask everybody is a super basic thing. Like in the regular episodes, I will ask uh, what the game gets right compared to the comic, what the game gets wrong. And if they had somebody who wanted to get into that comic, would they give them that game hmm. as a primer course? And sometimes that'll have to be amended a little bit. Like you've got 
you know, Batman games where there are some really good ones. And I don't, you know, to try to get around people saying, oh, you know, I wouldn't give them this game because Arkham Asylum exists. I've kind of turned that into, like, if this is the only Batman game that exists, would you give them this one as a primer course? There's some really good games out there as well, too. Um, you know, the the, ba- the Arkham Asylum games have just been really incredible, uh, for sure. It's not only from a gameplay perspective, but the storylines have been uh, amazing as well, too. But you look at the the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games, too. Uh, the Batman, the animated series uh, Game Boy game that, that was out there, too, was was a fun game and for the graphics of its time was really amazing that's one thing i'm surprised i haven't had to fight people on like everybody that i've had on has at least been old enough to realize that graphics change so i haven't had a lot of people sitting there you know crapping on the graphics for things and stuff everybody has you know thankfully for me everybody has looked at things in the context of this game came out 20 25 years ago so they're not expecting PS5 graphics when they look at a Game Boy game. And when I got my big old gray brick Game Boy, um, obviously it came with Tetris because they all yeah. did. But my parents also got me Link's Awakening. Mm. And I have no idea why they got it for me. Um, it was the first video game console I'd had. So like the only thing I had ever really talked about with video games in front of them was you know we'd go to my friend's house and you know we'd play a sports game or we'd play a fighting game or something so i have no idea why they got me Link's awakening <laughs> but i really love that they did because i love that game and you know, i ran the batteries out like <laughs> twice i think that first day when it comes to the show itself though you you got started a couple of years ago um you've been continuously doing you've had some great articles i've looked at your, your podcast as well too you have great, exciting content for what I'm seeing here. Is that something you look forward to every every time you have a show or every time you have a guest on? Is that something that drives you to keep doing this? Oh, definitely. Um, I, when I go out, I very rarely ask a guest, hey, you know, do you want to come on for this certain episode? I mean, obviously there's some people where that's just the perfect thing you know chris sims goes on and calls himself the world's biggest batman fan so yeah i'm gonna ask chris sims to come on for a batman game Uh, but other than that it's pretty much just hey you're somebody that i think would be good to have on the show like here is a list of things on the website that i'm looking to get booked the soonest what excites you and it has really surprised me what has gotten people to come on the show like what? Like, for some reason, I never thought Chris Sims would want to come on for Danger Girl. <laughs> like, it makes perfect sense, but it's just not something that I thought about. I'm, and looking through here, just looking through my own website, um, the guy that talked about Epo's Road to Glory, Trevor from Catching Up on Cinema, like, I never would have thought that he would be somebody that into the manga stuff Hmm. and i don't know why after going back and recording with him because all the signs were there so that was just me missing things but you know i got somebody who was really into this manga and was really into the game and knew a bunch about it and i can't think of anybody better i could have gotten you have guests that surprise you which is which is always a great thing to see is there one guest or a couple of guests that you've been trying to get that you haven't quite landed yet? I want to get Gail Simone on. Um, oh, she's, she's worked awesome. on games. She's just great. Um, watching her troll people on Twitter is <laughs> probably the best part of my day. Yep. And I want to get Jay edited on. You know, I almost had it with him talking about the Cyclops Marvel snapshots when that was coming out. And that was just one of the ones where timing things happened and it wasn't going to work out. And it doesn't help so much that he just doesn't really play games. So I'm going to have to find something where, you know, he loves the comic side of things enough to overcome that. I mean... Uh, that's easy enough as it is it's not like you have to go by video games itself even though that that is your brand you can always branch off for an episode <laughs> yeah that's one of the things i've been telling people lately too because especially as i get into you know, like ps2 stuff mm-hmm. xbox 360 stuff that kind of thing um 
I don't have time to finish all of these games. So I'm spending a lot of time, especially lately, watching YouTube playthroughs, reading stuff about them. You know, I'm playing the game as much as I can. Yeah. But also, I'm not going to... You guys know, there's no way I went out and bought Spider-Man Web of Fire to do that episode. I'm not spending $300 on a game. Although it's Spider-Man, so I might. There's so much great content overall when it comes to not only comic properties, but video games as well, too. Yeah, since the 70s, basically, you could start from when it comes to at least video games and then comics, obviously, 30s, 40s, etc. And that, that's just North America. Not even talking about Japan. What are some of your top five comics that you currently enjoy and which ones do you continue to follow, even though you may not have read them in a few years? When I started getting my poll list pulled together, um, one of the things that I was really jumping on was Immortal Hulk. Hmm. And so that was probably like 30 some issues into the run. And then I've just picked up the single issues since then. Honestly, I've been getting a lot of indie stuff. Um, a lot of Aftershock and Vault books hmm. have been really good. I don't think either one of those publishers know how to put out a bad book right now, which is not good for my wallet. Because basically, if they put something out, I'm, I'm seriously considering getting it. That's, yeah, that that's the horrible thing. You know, you have to work to support your hobbies. <laughs> well, it's that, and those kind of people are the ones that I've ended up talking to to have on the show a lot, too. Perfect. So, hey, not only do you put out a good book, you're a cool person that I want to support anyway. Yeah, now I'm double going to go get your book. Thank you, horrible person, for writing something very good and taking all my money. <laughs> Independent creators are, are basically the the staple when it comes to enjoying, you know, creative content that's not part of a big two or a big three. And and that's honestly the, the best type of creative person you can find. Out of all of these people, who would you recommend to maybe start reading right now if they, if you had a gun to the head type situation? Like Oh, let's see who I've had on Is that Honestly, it's going to be somebody from there. That's cool. Right, because that's who I've pulled in. David Pepos is putting out a lot of really good stuff. Yeah. Um, he just finished up a five-issue miniseries called Scout's Honor. Had him on the show, yeah. Yep, yeah, that one is amazing. It's incredible. Beautiful colors, great story. Like, I don't even want to tell your guys anybody, your, your listeners anybody, anything about it because I don't want to accidentally spoil anything because that's how much I think everybody should go read this. Uh, Witchblood, uh, Matthew Ehrman and Lisa Sterl doing that one. That is another really good one. I think that's um, locked in for like eight or ten episodes if I remember, or issues if I remember right. And they're like three or four issues in, depending on when this comes out. Uh, three issues as we're recording it. So it's relatively easy to go grab all of those if that's something they wanted to do. Nice. Cool. And Fernando Pinto is a guy from down in Chile, and he um, has a book that came out through 215 Inc. called Warped, and that is just a really fun one. He's got another book out, I forget who it's with, called Gun Punch, which is it's another really fun one, but he does a lot of art things. So I'm excited to see him start to slip into a lot more art projects going. And if I ever, I have a real vague idea for a comic in my head. And if I get far enough to where I can actually get it written, he is on that short list of people that I want drawing it for me nice. that I can actually talk to and make half happen. You got a, an elevator pitch or are you just holding on to it? Uh, right now, it is not formed enough to throw that out there. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, can't hurt for asking, you know? No, well, when I get it formed, maybe I'll come back for it. We'll see. Not maybe. I, I definitely want to have you on the show if you're going to make something like that, for sure. Well, let's... Any, any type of independent creator, anyone that's been either new to the industry or, or famous, whether it's in comics, film, TV, movie, or video games, or music or video games. It's amazing how many geeky musicians you can find too it's pretty interesting that's one thing i haven't been able to pull off yet and mostly it's just because i haven't thought of anybody that i thought i could actually get to come on the show <laughs> i mean i think everybody's dream guest would be dave grohl oh yeah 
for sure. I have no context for if that would be a good guest or not. But, you know, even just talking to him for two seconds and saying, oh, yeah, this isn't going to be good would be amazing. Are you a D&D player? I just started. Uh, pandemic was good for that kind of thing. Uh, a couple of friends and I online went and we started a very loosely scheduled thing. And it's kind of one guy kind of learning to do the whole game master thing. A couple experienced people, a couple people like me who hadn't really played. So, I mean, I'm enjoying what I'm doing with them, I but I don't have any context for if it's what I'm doing with them is normal or not. I've never played myself. I've only interviewed people that have played it, which is kind of ironic being a geek show that I've never played D&D, but you know. What type of character did you create? Because I'm always curious about that as well. I made a sorcerer with wild magic stuff because mm -hmm. I just kind of wanted things to go insane. Can you uh, summon animals or is that a higher level uh, spell? You can... I want to say that's a higher one just because I haven't seen that kind of thing on any of the spell lists that I've had to pick from yet. Well, if you do get a chance to sell animals, summon cows, and drop them from high heights, they do massive damage. I'll remember that. Call it uh, Cowabunga. Well, that would fit in really well with how we're playing. And kind of along those same lines, I used to play Magic the Gathering. Oh, I do too. And um, I have quit twice. You never really quit. Well, I know, that's the problem. Because every once in a while, I'll start watching videos of stuff, and... I don't have any context for these new cards. I don't have people here I could go play with. The first time I quit was because we moved when I was in high school and where I moved to, nobody played. Mm. So I honestly have no idea what happened to those cards at all. And the last time I quit, I ended up selling the entire box of cards that I had mm. to some kids in a church youth group who wanted to learn how to play. So couple hundred bucks to them they split it up however they split it up and mm -hmm. got a bunch of cards and I mean, it's not like i was going through picking out anything to keep <laughs> so whatever random good things i had in there they got all that too well i hey, kept all my decks together when i gave it to them so they had oh, something wow. to start with plus it was just more it would have been more work to pull them apart anyway obviously geeks and nerds are are the in thing these days growing up were you were you picked on as a geek or a nerd not really. I wasn't into comics so much when I was growing up. Like I knew who the characters were and everything. And you know, when we were young enough to still have recess on the playground and stuff, everybody was kind of you know playing Spider-Man or Batman and stuff anyway because the cartoons were out then. And with video games, everybody had their stuff. But I mean, everybody always had their weird game that they liked. But most of what I had was sports games and like. Sonic the Hedgehog and mainstream stuff mm -hmm. like that. Is there uh, any games coming up that you're going to be looking into that would be interesting? Because I'm always curious. Uh, the next things that I have to get booked anyway, because I, I have some ones where I've got people lined up. It's just, I mean, they're friends so they know that time-wise right now it's a giant pain in the ass. But like uh, Lucky Luke is one where it, it's a one of the Belgio Frank French podcasts or comics, and my wife is really into the comic, but she never played the game or anything. And so, you know, I'm really excited to see if I can find somebody who knows the comic because I can go in and look at the comic you know i can look stuff up real quick i'm gonna have no context for when it came out or what it was like as it was coming out or anything so i've got that one uh tintin kind of in that same mm -hmm. realm there classic but magic knight ray earth hmm. is never... based on a manga what i know right <laughs> magic somehow I have this thing sitting there on my list. Nobody is jumping on that one. And I don't know why. It's one of the Saturn shooters that's gotten fairly valuable. So it's not like it's a game that people don't know about. I think it's just people come in and as they're looking, they're they're thinking already, you know, they're thinking of the Batman stuff and the Spider-Man stuff and the Superman stuff and 
like all of those are so easy to get somebody for because I can essentially go and I've got like three or four friends where I can say, hey, I need an episode in two days. They've got the time to look things up real quick and we'll get something recorded. But you get the weird things like this, like um, Destiny of an Emperor is one that I missed that is based on this really, as far as I can tell, obscure manga that I can't find a translation for so I might just kind of leave it on the list and never mention it again but it's a manga based on Journey to the West it's the weird ones like that you know just sitting there and saying hey what got you into this comic franchise and just not saying anything for 20 minutes because I'm giving somebody a chance to talk about this thing that they don't usually get to talk about wonder if you could uh, find the uh, author artist still I'm going to need to look into that and then hope that we or I'd have to hope that they speak English because that's the only thing I could competently do an interview in I'm always looking for people to come on the show so if, if you're listening to this or watching this and want to come on the show then you should get in contact with me because we can probably find a way to make that happen everyone has one or two people that inspire them on their path to where they are today who is that for you for me, most of my inspiration is coming from friends who are doing kind of the same thing. And so it's the friendly competition is going with it. Uh, the biggest one right now, because he's able to be more consistent with it, is Dan McMahon from the Gate Crashers podcast. Just the fact that we can go compare what we're doing to the other person, but it, there's never any maliciousness about it. So you know, we can go in there and it's completely like, I want to destroy you. I want to have so many more downloads than you. I want to get this so many better guests than you. But it's also in a way of like, I want us both to have a, a crap ton of success with it. I just want mine to be more. <laughs> but we both know exactly how seriously to take each other. So it's all fine. From a professional's perspective, you've been doing this podcast for five years. You're obviously a passionate about your geekiness and your geek culture that you're cultivating with video games and comics and you've had over 25,000 downloads at least for uh, an episode if not more overall for your total show do you consider yourself personally successful not yet um, there are so many things I want to do with this that I know I could be doing if I just had the time to get it done um, you know I want to be able to put more eyes in front of people making good independent stuff and I want to be able to get guests on where the only thing really keeping me from doing it is the fact that I have to work around my day job so you know I can't take a day off of work to go interview somebody who can only do it during the day so right now you know I want to have episodes that are getting much better downloads the day they come out. I want to be able to tell people, hey, you know, come on the show, promote your thing, and it's definitely going to improve your sales. And I've got a couple people who are helping me write comic reviews on the site, and I'm able to pay them barely, but I want to be able to tell them, you know, just go crazy, write whatever you want, you know I'm going to pay you for everything no matter what right now I kind of have to tell them you know, kind of keep it to one or two a month do you think that success means you have to, it has to have a monetary value no it definitely doesn't but I also don't want to ask people to write things and do work for me for free because yeah. as you're doing your creative stuff I mean people deserve to get paid for it it's like every single episode that I do talking to the creators I find a way to slip in there to you know, pay your artist mm -hmm. cool I was just curious about that <laughs> nothing I, nothing against your, your values whatsoever I was just asking a question you should pay everyone no matter it's also what. an excuse for me to slip into here to have me saying to pay your artist <laughs> so that's fine yeah I've, I've said that many times as well too I completely agree with you yeah. pay pay the people that are creative that you're enjoying your their uh their skill sets that they've worked very hard in their lives to create and maintain so you know if 
yeah, me paying for the hosting, me paying for the website, I don't care about that. Yeah. That's it's cheaper than me going to the flea market back when I used to do that. It's cheaper than a lot of other things I could be getting into. No, it's fine. It's keeping my sanity. So I'm not worried about that. But when I'm asking other people to do things, I want to be able to pay them somehow. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? So far with this, I haven't had too many. Um, like, it's just been, you know, I didn't put out an episode or I went a few weeks without putting out an episode or, hey, this was a bad guest and I wasted my time recording with them. So I just kind of can, can that episode and nobody, <clears throat> man, it's a bad guest and I wasted my time recording with them. So I just kind of can that episode and nobody ever knows about it and nobody will ever know about it because I've got no reason to go be malicious about it. Nobody, you know, ever came on and intentionally wasted my time or anything. But for me, when a failure happens, which is mostly trying to get somebody on the show and it doesn't work out, it's just, okay, you know, it didn't work out. I'll go and f try to find another success. The younger generation are looking at your work and they're inspired by what you're doing by merging both games and, and comics together into a podcast is, is actually a very great idea. They're being inspired to create their own works, either in as a podcaster or as a writer or as whatever they'd like to do creatively. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? The main thing that keeps popping up when people talk to me is to just don't be an asshole. Like you get so much better results from th when you are a genuinely nice person. Uh, I have these people on the show because it's starting to get around that, you know, not only do they get to come on and they get the free promotion and everything, but you know, what you hear on the show is legit who I am. So like, they're not coming on and I'm, you know, cussing them out and telling them how horrible everything is and then turn on the niceness for the show. They're coming on because they know I like your work, whether I've seen this specific thing or not is irrelevant because I like what I've seen from you already. And I want you to succeed. I want to go in there and I don't care if the episode that we put out bombs but I, I take pride in the fact that I have not backed a Kickstarter yet that has failed. And I'm going to take a small bit of the credit there and say that that's because I'm putting out the episode, talking to the person about their Kickstarter, and then continually, every time I see people talking about it, oh, hey, you want to hear more about this project? Well, go listen to this episode here. And you can hear them talking about the thing much more information than you can get looking at a tweet. Well, before we let you go, how do we find, of course, your work, Chris, and where can we find you on social media? The best, easiest place, if you could only remember one, is playcomics.com, which you have been seeing at the bottom of the screen if you're as you're watching this the whole time, so I hope you would remember that. And that has links to all the social media stuff. Uh, mostly, I am on Twitter, over at Play Comics Cast. Um, technically, there's a Facebook group, but it not, it, you know it's a Facebook group. There's too many fractured Facebook groups going on. So mostly, if you want to get in touch with me, then Twitter is the way to go. Um, there's also, if you want to be a guest on the show, you can go to the website, and along with a big old chunk of hey, this is kind of what I'm expecting from you. This is the list of games and stuff. There's a contact form on there that you can fill out. Um, it's certainly not something you have to do, but it's there because some people just like having it. And if you want to go over on Discord and get with me, then you can go to playcomics.com slash Discord because I like having full control of my links like that. And it will forward you over to the Gonna Geek Network's Discord server of and I'm a member of the Gunna Geek Network. So I know there's a channel over there for play comic stuff, but also it's just a really good server full of good, friendly, geeky people. 
Awesome. Good stuff. I like that. Well, you know, I hate to say this, Chris, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I just want to thank you for coming on the show, and I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me on. I know we had some scheduling problems before, but <laughs> it's, you know, it's always good when it works out. And when I get the comic written up to a form that's good enough to share with people, and stuff, I'll definitely get in contact with you again. Well, I, I want to be the first one to interview you, so there you go. <laughs> well, that just all comes down to timing. <laughs> But you will be in that first wave. At oh, least. Okay, fair enough. I'll hold you to that. Uh, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. Of course, thanks, Chris, for coming on the show. Look at his website, Play Comics, download his podcast, and some content as well, too, because he has some really great stuff that uh, if you like games and if you like comics, you know, that's a great place to go to to see the combination of both. Oh, quick question. What do you think of Battletoads? It's hard. <laughs> I... Um never played much of it because it's really hard i like the idea of it but it's really hard hey all kurt sasso here from two geeks talking if you like this video and these quick clips here make sure you take a look at our youtube channel youtube.com forward slash tgt media make sure you hit the like button and subscribe as well hit the bell to make sure you get notifications of course from videos like this here uh Thank you everyone for listening and watching over the years and keep listening and watching for new and exciting interviews with talented and creative people in the entertainment industry. I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Thank you so much.